video blog, season one, episode one. Hello, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Brian Keith. Brian Patrick Keith, to be exact. And, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I was born July 30th, 1974. My parents, uh, Lawrence and Christine Keith, you know, um, they had uh, me and my two older brothers, Dave and Mike. And uh, I'm doing this blog because um, I, I want to I wanna reach out and, you know, uh, express myself, you know. I, I'm 47, you know, uh, and I've had a very, very, very hard life hard life um as you can see okay now you're, you're trying to think of yourself ow and yeah it 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 sucks um these are plates okay they're uh fake teeth um you're not something i'm i'm really proud of having fake teeth because i mean you know who doesn't take care of their teeth you know uh, but like I said, I've had a hard life. Um, I was born July 30th, 1974, uh, 4.59 a.m. Okay, uh, in the town I'm sitting in right now, Jamestown, New York. Okay, um, at the local hospital, WCA, it's still there, you know, um, I think I was born at the WCA, uh, I know it was born in Jamestown. It could have been, okay. at the time, you know, I mean, that was 1974, and Jamestown, um, you know, is much different than it is now. Uh, you know, um, Jones Hill, which I coincidentally live at the corner lot of Jones Hill, which is uh, Jamestown in general, okay? Um, and if you know anything about the history of this town, okay, it's Lucy, Lucille Ball, I mean, she was born in Sauron, New York, which is, like, less than, like, a five-minute drive from here. And she became uh, a famous actor, comedian, um, you know, and, uh, you know, she debuted in, um, you know, on television when television was free and, and came over the air instead of on a cable. Well, um... I, uh, you know, I grew up in Asheville, which is, uh, you know, it's, that's like a 15, maybe a 10 minute drive, 15 minute drive, 15 minute drive, you know, uh, I want to say due south. Yeah, due south. Anyway, <clears throat> wait, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not good with direction. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Asheville, New York, um, in a small house. Um, it had, uh, four bedrooms. It doesn't seem like a small house for four bedrooms, right? But it was pretty small. I mean, in comparison to some of the houses I've seen in my life. But, uh, you know, I was raised by, um, you know, uh, two parents, you know, and I had, uh, grew up with two brothers, two older brothers. One, Michael uh, Douglas Keith, he's my eldest brother, um, he, uh, he's five years older than I am, and, uh, and then my, my second oldest brother, David Allen Keith, he, uh, he's, uh, a year older than I am, 14 months, to be exact, yeah, and I'm the baby, I'm the baby of the family, the Keith family, you know, of Asheville, New York. Um, anyway, so life growing up in the Keith family, you know, I mean, I, I was born in 74, you know, and anyone who um, can relate to those years of 74 through, well, now, I mean, mainly 74 through, uh, I'd say 94, you know, the first 20 years of your life, you know, anybody old enough to, 
relate to this know is that the first 20 years of your life, you know, you spend close to your parents, you know, close to your, you, you know, you're, they're raising you and, you know, I mean, I, and most of the time anyway, right? So most of the time, you know, in the first 21 years of your life, you know, you're under your parents, you know, um, the lucky ones anyway, the lucky ones who, uh, you know, whose parents, um, care enough and understand, you know, the time and effort it takes to raise children. It's a very sensitive subject for me. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, I grew up in, you know, the, the late seventies, early eighties, you know, and in those times, you know, um, things were, uh, you know, a little more innocent, I guess. I don't know. It was the, uh, uh you know, I remember the emergence of, uh, video games. You know, the first system I ever played, um, was a Commodore 64, which is, um, it's wrong. It would be the Atari 2600. It, well, the original tar, Atari. Um, I remember when my parents, you know, obtained the Atari. And the Atari was, <laughs> it was an amazing thing at that time, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, in the emergence of video games, you know, uh, TV was um, becoming you know, more entertainment. There's, you know, there's, uh, you know, TV shows uh, that, you know, you could watch, you know, you could watch movies, you know, and it was all free. You know, it was all, uh, you know, it wasn't, <laughs> I almost said online, okay? That's that's how, you know, how long ago it was because it, it wasn't online. It was on a frequency, you know, you know it, it was, uh, it, you know, it came from a tower you know, a, a relay station or whatever, you know. But anyway, you know, <clears throat> so, you know, um, I, I grew up in a very poor family. You know, my mom and dad, uh, you know, they worked hard. You know, they worked uh, every day. So, well, yeah, every day. <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot of things in my family history that I just recently found out, you know, the... Uh, you know, I, my my heritage, you know, it's it's very vast. You know, it, it spans like uh, you know, uh, you know, a few different cultures. You know, and when I speak about culture, you know, um, I talk about like and my reference for culture. Okay, is the um the setting in which your life uh, is, you know, progressing. You know, like. You know, my culture, okay, you know, I grew up in like the late 70s, or, you know, 80s, you know, and, uh, you know, um, that was a time, you know, that, uh, from what I remember, you know, um, there weren't a lot of, you know, freedoms that we have now, and, and what I mean freedoms is, you know, everybody's like, well, you know, you might say to yourself, how are we getting any freer than we were there? Then, um, you know, the freedoms that, like, you know, I enjoyed was, you know, um, it was pre, uh, you know, corporate takeover, <laughs> to be blunt, you know, I mean, everything's been taken over by, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, you know, everyone wants to fill their bank account, like, exponentially, <laughs> which is, I mean, understandable, but anyway, you know, stuff like, um, so, you know, it was kind of a much more innocent time, although it wasn't that innocent, you know. I mean, there was a lot of things that happened in, you know, my era from the time I was born, you know, to the time I, uh, you know, reached the prime age of 21, okay, just 21, you know. That's, that's changed and, you know, is long forgotten, I'm sure, by many. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we forget things because we get so caught up in, you know, being pummeled by, uh, well, outside stuff, you know, advertisement, you know, spend your money, spend your money, whatever, you know. Uh, you know. Anyway, uh, so, you know, um, 
my my mom and dad struggled financially. Um, you know, uh, my dad he uh, yeah you know, he he was a traveler in his youth. Um, you know he he traveled a lot. I guess he he was in the army. You know, uh, and my mom, you know, she traveled well as well. You know, she was originally from Baltimore, Maryland. And, uh, you know, my dad, he was, uh, he's from around here. You know, he's around Jamestown. It's where, uh, his mom, you know, and her heritage is from, you know, uh, so, you know, um, I don't know the exact story of how my mom and dad met, but, you know, uh, in that time, you know, in the in the seventy, you know, well, whenever they met, you know, I mean, they were, they were like, I don't know, my dad, he, uh, you know, he, he rode motorcycles and, um, I guess he traveled, you know, and uh, my mom, um, her mom, you know, moved up here from Maryland to Jamestown. And I was speaking with my, my two brothers last night because we talk often, you know. And um, like we, we, ha we have deep talks, my brothers and I. And it wasn't always that way, you know. Um, each one of us went through some very trying uh, experiences. Life is easy, but people aren't just meat. You know what I mean? I'll explain what I mean by that. All right? You know, um, we we might close our eyes and plug our ears, you know, and hold our nose and zip our mouth shut on certain things, you know. We don't speak about certain things, we don't listen to certain things. We don't look at certain things. You know, and, you know, uh, in, in the talks that I have with my eldest brother and my second eldest brother, um, you know, we are, we are very uh, close, even though we haven't been physically close. You know, we were close when we were young. I, I um, you know, my, my brothers and I, you know, we were put in foster care. You know, I was just a baby. You know, um, my mom and dad had difficult times. You know, um, each of them had very difficult lives. You know, uh, you had this, you know, this rave, you know, I hear it all the time, you know, about the entitled generation. You know, and the ones, the old ones, you know, the, uh, I guess they're called graybeards. Uh, some people call them graybeards. Um, it's, it's my generation, you know, like, the late 40s, 50s, you know, early 60s, you know, that generation. All right. Now, uh, we, uh, you know, we went through a lot, you know, in the late 70s, okay? Um, children didn't have rights like they do now. Right? There was no entitlement, okay? When when you were a child in you know in my era, okay, I'm speaking from my experience, okay. Um, you shut the hell up and listen, or you got your ass handed to you. Yeah, I mean you literally got, you know, the beating of your life if you didn't listen attentively. Okay. Um, men were serious to me. I mean, when I grew up, how I looked at it, men took the role of like, you know, um, you know, uh, strength, you know, and I didn't understand, you know, what strength was back then, but, you know, I mean, being older, you know, I understand strength now, you know, and that's how I perceived men as strong. It's, uh, everything that, it, that was the epitome of strength came from a man. 
And little did I know, you know, uh, it does, but it's it's not just a a gender, you know, thing for strength. You know, strength is, you know, strength is not something you can, you know, actually like objectify. You know, it's 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 all it's all um within you know your own like limits do you understand strength until you've been there you know and like i said i have a hard life you know i'm sorry about the movement of the camera i just have to i'm holding this <laughs> anyway so you know when you're a kid you shut the hell up you listen you did you complied you didn't get entitled you didn't have right you know i mean in, in my uh in my early uh tween years you know 10 11 12 okay they, they they were just starting you know the campaign of children being um uh looked after more than they'd had previously okay you know um you, uh, as a child, you know, at that, in that time, you know, if you messed up in school, okay, the, the T, the teacher got you first. Okay. And then it was the principal. Okay. And then after the principal, okay, it was your dad. And, you know, it, my dad, I, my dad, he was five foot 11 you know, maybe 175 pounds of nothing but lean muscle. All right. That man was hard as steel. Okay. I mean, you know, and, you know, and, and that was just my dad. I mean, let alone other dads. Okay. <laughs> dads. Okay. When you thought of dad, you thought of like thunder fist from hell. Boosh, down on your head. You know, you don't fuck up, dude. <laughs> uh-uh. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, God forbid you hear those words. Wait till your dad gets home. Actually, it was more like, wait till your father gets home. You know, you heard those words, you're, you're done, dude. Ha <laughs> ha, you're dead meat. <laughs> oh, I tell you, you know, like, you know, so your teacher would get you. The principal would get you, and, and, and at that time, that time, you know, they had wooden paddles with holes in them. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Wooden paddles with holes. And no, they didn't hold back, okay? They didn't, me, 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 me. No, 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 no. It wasn't, you know, gentle tap, okay? It was, I'm going to get you. Your ass is on fire, okay? You know, they hit you so hard, you know, your intestines went out and tickled your freaking tonsils. <laughs> they hit you that hard, okay? Like, whoo. Uh, but anyway, um, so you know, uh, I, I, you know, I went to a foster home. You know, my my brothers they went to a foster home. Foster, you know, um, I was just a baby, uh, and you know, speaking with my brothers, even just, you know, just recently. You know, um, we taught to live memories, relive memories, you know, of our childhood. You know, growing up in a, in a time when, you know, men were, you know, you know, fathers, okay, meant business, okay, and mothers, you know, okay, moms, you know, they were, they were the nurturing, you know, you know, you know they, 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 you know, like my mom, I think she you know, she, she, she worked, okay, you know, um, she worked at the local library here in Jamestown, you know, as a page for a while, for a long time, and, and a page would, uh, look up books, you know, put books back on the shelves, you know, she, she knew the Dewey Decimal System, okay, she knew it in and out, and in and out, and in and out, like all those librarian, you, you know, librarians up there do, you know, and, you know, uh, my mom, you know, she had a hard life too, you know. She traveled from Baltimore, okay, with her mom and her brother, you know, Paul. 
right? And my Uncle Paul, and God bless his soul, uh, you know, and <clears throat> her family, my family history for my mom, you know, I mean, they had a hard lives back, you know, I mean, we're talking like, you know, my grandmother was like, you know, World War II, you know, prime, like, you know, and she, she lived through, you know, I, God knows, because I, I haven't spoken to my grandmother since, you know, um, 1986, late 1986, you know, and, I, and, you know, and I was just a baby back then, you know, in 86, I was 11 years old when she passed, you know, so I, I didn't know my grandmother as much as, you know, I would love to have known my grandmother from my mom's side, anyway. My dad's side, my, my dad's grandmother, um, oh, man, you know, uh, we were talking last night, and, you know, um, she she lived through uh, a, a stalker, like, a, a, a very bizarre event here in Jamestown, you know, and I've yet to look it up, but I'm going to do some research on it, but, um, she was uh, actually stalked by a murderer, you know, and had, you know, and she was a, a very uh, well-respected uh, member of the community of Jamestown, New York, you know. Um, she was, you know, uh, she knew um, policemen, you know, by name, apparently, that's from, from what I understand, um, because, you know, she was... Uh, subject to, you know, a stalker, like I said, who wanted to murder her. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, my, my whole family has dark secrets. You know, a genealogical history that, you know, I've only gone so far back, you know, and that's just my mom and dad's generation and then their mom and dad's generation to a certain degree. You know, so like, you know, I'm familiar with like my mom's story and I'm familiar with, you know, a portion of my dad's story, you know, and their parents. Okay. Like my, my dad's father, my grandfather, grandfather Keith, he was actually in, uh, the world war one, I, I believe. And, um, he was a Navy man and he was blown off a ship. Yeah, true story. He was blown off a ship and had to survive on a deserted island out in the ocean, that uncharted one, and was luckily rescued. Um, that's what I know about my grandfather from my father's side. Now, my mother's uh, mother, all right, now she's from Baltimore, Maryland, and my grandfather, um, my mom's father, I um I don't know too much about him at all because I never met him. Um okay, so my my grandmother and my mom and her brother Paul <clears throat> they um they traveled from Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, to Jamestown, New York. Okay, because my grandmother had met um she was part of the Lonely Hearts Club, okay, in Baltimore. And I'm going to do some research on that, but, uh, you know, um, she came here to meet her husband, well, her future husband, well, supposed to be her future husband, you know, and, and I'll get more into that, you know, I mean, after all, this is a blog, you know, it's her blog, or I guess that's what they call it, you know, it's just something I can express about me, you know, so that, you know, I'm not such a ghost anymore, you know, to others. Because I am a ghost. To, I'm an enigma to many people. The people that know me, they, they don't really know me, you know. And uh, so anyway, um, my, my grandmother, my mom, and her brother Paul traveled here. And they're, okay, my brother, okay, my mom, she has uh, Paul, Sam, uh, Nick, um... Emmanuel, okay, uh, I believe those are her brothers. Those are the ones I know of. I mean, if there's any more, you know, brothers, um, I I'm not sure. Okay, and she had a sister, uh, Mary. Uh, 
they left uh, Samuel, uh, Nick, Emmanuel, and I'm not sure about Mary. But uh, yeah, they were left homeless orphans in uh, Maryland. Uh, I haven't heard too many stories about that, but the one I did hear, um, my uncle Emmanuel, who, who my uncle Paul would talk about sometimes, uh, died at age 21 from gangrene. He had diabetes and he got his, uh, foot caught in an elevator and, uh, it crushed his foot and he refused to go to the hospital. Um, he refused to go to the hospital, gangrene set in and he died. And uh, so, you know, Uncle Paul didn't talk about what happened after Emmanuel died or where Uncle Paul was when Emmanuel died, but Emmanuel was his older brother, you know. And, uh, yeah. And uh, Uncle Nick, um, I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't know his story. Uh, I only met him maybe a couple of times, so I'm not really sure. And Aunt Mary, um, you know, I met her uh, once, uh, and she stayed with us for a short period of time in Nashville, New York. Um, she she called the, the local town Busty, because it's spelled B-U-S-T-I, and it's Busty. <laughs> it's literally Busty. You know what I mean? But, um, so, you know, um, that's a little history of my family. And, uh, you know, uh, so growing up, um, after the foster home, you know, I, I mean, I did, I did, I was raised by my parents, you know, my mom and dad, you know, and in a house in Asheville, you know, my mom was a librarian. My dad, he was, uh, he was a jack of all trades. Um, he could do anything, you know, primarily he was, uh, you know, into mechanics, you know, it, it was, it was what they would call a motor head, I guess. You know what I mean? He was, you know, he built uh, engines and you know worked on vehicles and you know he, he was very uh, technically technically savvy. You know, I mean, he do all things. You know, uh, weld, work a wrench, uh, farm. Uh, you know, he was a rancher, he, he worked on oil fields, you know, um, my dad was, you know, he, he was a very, very well-traveled man, you know, very, very seasoned man, you know, and, uh, so, you know, um, he's really hard to pinpoint, like, a specific career path, but my mom was a librarian, and my dad, you know, he was a, a, a laborer, I guess. I know. And, um, you know, we had it hard growing up because, you know, wages weren't good, you know, and, you know, he didn't, you know, as employers worked you, you know, for very little, you know. But, uh, you know, we, 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 did, we did all right. You know, I mean, I had a good childhood after the foster home. You know, I mean, it, it was rich and full of, uh, you know, um, character building experiences. <laughs> I mean, wait till you hear about some of this stuff, okay? Because, like, you know, that's what I plan to do. I, I plan to, uh, you know, talk about things, talk about me and my family, and the people I've met in my life, you know, and I'm going to bring you in, you know, which is like the first time ever, you know, that I've ever allowed anyone in, you know, outside of like, you know, certain people, uh, and only tidbits of my life, you know, um, uh, I get more into me, but, uh, you know, I figure keep this a half hour, and, uh, I'm going to sign off for now, and uh, thank you for watching. Um, see you next time.